Assalamu alaikum, good afternoon, and welcome to Knowledge Talks. A weekly entertainment and knowledge sharing program aired live specifically to share with you topics that contribute knowledge to the society. Every week, Knowledge Talks hosts and invites guests that are experts, professionals, and leaders from the field that bring wealth of knowledge to you. Knowledge Talks also highlights and promotes talents in the country that contribute knowledge and success to the nation. This program, ladies and gentlemen, is a weekly session that I will have with you every Tuesday at 5 p.m. I'm your host, Tariq Khalal Al Barwani, along with our studio engineer, DJ Ayub, for an hour bringing you free knowledge at your doorstep on Oman Raj FM 90.4. Okay, stay tuned after this music break for today's interesting knowledge topic and definitely interesting personality. Okay, welcome back to Knowledge Talks, ladies and gentlemen. I'm your host, Tariq Khalal Al Barwani, along with our studio engineer, DJ Ayub, with you here live today on Oman Radio FM 90.4. Now, are you aware on what are the faces of innovation? Well, my beautiful guest today, Ms. Aurélie Salvin. Uh, a storyteller and social entrepreneur will be sharing with us about her knowledge and experience on the 10 phases of innovation today. Aurélie, or even you can call it Aurélie, is a French social entrepreneur based in Barcelona. Aurélie, or even Lily, has been working for the past 10 years in the social innovation field, collaborating with Oxfam, Ashoka, Unreasonable Institute or Impact Hub. <music> Lily has founded and curated different TEDx events such as TEDx Barcelona Women, TEDx Barcelona ED and TEDx Barcelona Change. Lily is passionate about storytelling and she is coaching teams and individuals all around the world to better master their own narrative. Lily is now running her own freelancing activities, The A Factor, as an events curation uh, advisor and has set up events in places as diverse as Beirut and Nairobi. Lily also founded the Shift Balance Association to coach women leaders in emerging countries in communication and storytelling, ladies and gentlemen. Now today, Lily is here with us in Oman on a short visit to share with us about her story on 10 phases of innovation. Lily, thank you very much for joining us today here at Knowledge Talks. It's really lovely and pleasure to have you here in Oman thank and at the Re much. Oman Radio FM 90.4, of course. Well, thank you for having me. I'm really happy to be here. Uh, so tell me one thing. How do you find Oman so far? Is it your first visit in Oman? It's my first visit in Oman. I landed yesterday. Okay. And I was coming from Doha, actually, at the end of a GCC tour. And okay. so far, I loved it. I, I love the welcome. I love, I love the peace. That in Oman, yeah, alhamdulillah, yeah. the chilled alhamdulillah. atmosphere. Okay, I love it. What brings you to Oman? So um, basically, I've been driven to Oman one because I wanted to know more about that country, which has a different vibe and a different atmosphere from the rest of the Middle East. Mm -hmm. And second, I want to meet local entrepreneurs, social change makers who are trying to to impact their country for the better. Okay. Awesome, awesome. Have you, have you met any so far? Yes, I mean, I've I've met you already. Awesome. I've, I've met awesome. Reem. <laughs> awesome. And I met uh, people from the lounge, from okay. Tower Soul. So yeah, I already met uh, a few of them. And I hope they didn't disappoint you. No, they didn't, actually. Okay, mashallah. Where do you plan to go next in Oman? Um, so, I don't know, I will do some some trips around. I've heard that uh, the, the dunes, as you said, the wadis are oh, really yes. nice. I'm yeah. not sure about Salala, we'll see. It's a nice place, but don't it, miss that. Yes, Yeah. people say it's not the best time of the year to go, but yeah, why not? Uh, yeah, uh, well, but was you, since you're already here, probably it's an opportunity to visit yes. the place. Yeah, so got, anyway, everywhere, we'll see. You've got wadis, you've got yeah. dunes, you know, you, we, we've got nice forts over here. Yeah. You, did you go to Souk, uh, Matrah Souk? No, I, I just arrived yesterday. I will take you there just let me know okay I mean, uh, you'll negotiate for me uh, inshallah why not <laughs> i will do that don't worry about that uh, we'll definitely do that now 
to our topic today is is really about you mm-hmm. uh, uh, the great thing that you have done for the society and 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 and, and specifically about the 10 uh, phases of innovation yeah before we start that could you kindly define to us what is innovation hmm so for me innovation is really um, the, the the moment where you take that leap okay. that uh, that jump into the vacuum no it's like you could go for the clear path you could go and follow the track that everybody is following and then you're like mm, you know what i'm going to try to open this door on the right on the left and try to take a jump in something i don't know and see what happens okay like that's it. that could be one definition what does it mean to you personally for me it's exploring i feel like my life is all about exploring all the time i don't know i didn't know you yesterday i didn't know you five minutes ago but we're friends already i know so and, and after the show we're going to be best friends as well <laughs> I mean that that's what I love about you is exploring and thinking uh, uh looking at doing new things. Yeah. That's what you call a uh, 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 innovation is really is, right? Yes. Now I believe I've 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 come to know about the session that you've you you've conducted is on 10 phases of innovation. Mm-hmm. Please share about it. Okay. So basically the the idea is um to say that first we all have a story to tell. And and this idea that uh, I do believe in the motto of Ashoka everyone a change maker. Okay. So I really believe that each of us we have a responsibility to make a contribution to our society. Would it be just being nice to our neighbor, mm-hmm. even small things or up to setting up uh companies like Knowledge Oman or or bigger. So for me the the face of innovation is a lot about what is your fight? What is the fight that you really want to to take on? What is the story behind that that fight? What is the the meaning that you're pursuing and what is the yeah the the narrative that uh, in your life has impacted you so much that you want to go on that fight? Okay. Okay. Um for me looking at the title of it 10 faces are yeah. like the 10 things with it. is it, is it, am I in the right uh... Yes, I mean Innovation has so many faces, no? It can be sometimes we we always think about okay, Facebook, Steve Jobs, etc., no? When we think innovation, we think Silicon Valley, we think technology. Mm-hmm. But actually there is so much more about this. There are um people innovating in in research, in science, there are people innovating in emotional intelligence, there are people innovating in how to deal with uh, um the fact that that community is so diverse. So I think that innovation has really really had many many faces and okay. and we all faces of innovation so there are many more than than 10 of them M- many more than 10 of them yeah. but now is that 10 a magic number hmm why I mean, not 9 why not 11 i think people like lists do you do lists oh yes i do lists see i mean yeah. people like lists it's the typical to do list yeah. have an article about the five things the five places to visit in oman no and you're yeah. like okay i'm going to do that that's easy you know to apprehend hmm. so Yeah, 10 is a is a magical number, no? The mm-hmm. 10 commandments and yeah, we have like something. Oh, I I I I really really like that as well. Now, you are a social entrepreneur. Mhm. What does the term social add into entrepreneurism? It's the whole priority of it. It's what's your priority? For an entrepreneur, the priority is to that the business works and um mostly to 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 ensure that there's a sustainable and economical growth of the business no okay the social entrepreneur for me is this is important but the priority of the impact the social impact of its project is even bigger even more important so for me the social is that whatever i do would it be an event would it be um a, a workshop or a coaching is that the person who attended it feels better Okay. Awesome. awesome. That's that's my vision. Okay. Of, of no, I like that. So it's, it, would you agree uh, then that any uh, activity or in, in, uh, undertaking or enterprise that impacts the society and makes money can be categorized as a social enterprise? I think so. I think so. There there are so many again uh, um, tensions about definitions about social innovation. Some say that uh, uh, the UNO's definition is one, some say I mean it's it's quite polemic, but yeah, for me it's this, it's that if you have a sustainable model and you have a positive impact on your surroundings, yeah, I consider that you're a social venture, yeah. Okay. What if one uh, does an activity? Mhm. 
that doesn't bring money nevertheless yeah. impacts the society uh positively yeah the other so i met i met a lot of um ashoka fellows who um who actually have this model which is more an ngo model in 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 so much i mean i don't know if p- people are familiar with ashoka here or not so much or you I want w- me would to appreciate explain? if you could yeah? explain okay. yes so ashoka is um is an organization initially based in the u.s named okay. after um an Indian emperor called Ashoka and who was a very wise man and um, the idea is to select entrepreneurs which have a social impact so they, they're a little like the the pioneer of social entrepreneurship okay and uh, um, and so, so yeah basically what they do is to select these change maker and try to help them in their process so that they can bloom and really have a larger impact on on the society okay Uh, very, very exciting. Uh, we're going to take a quick break, ladies and gentlemen, and revert back with an interesting discussion today with Lily. <laughs> Welcome back to Knowledge Talks, ladies and gentlemen, and we are having an exciting discussion today with a very exciting personality, a storyteller and a social entrepreneur, Ori Lee, or you can say Lily. You know, by yes. the way, I like your name, by the way. Yeah. You got Lily or Orilly or Orilly. Uh, All of them are nice and, and it feels good. You know, when you say the name, it feels good. It comes from the heart. It See? feels good. That's yeah, exactly so it's a what very, I very, very unique uh, name, by the way. Before the music break, we spoke about uh, social innovation and you have uh, defined uh, uh, social entrepreneurism in, in, in a nutshell. Tell me one thing. Could you share with me some of the successful stories of uh, social enterprises that you've been across mm-hmm. or you know about uh, that people okay. can learn? Um, so I really like the, and, and that's where the, the two uh, faces uh, of, uh, of what I do come together, the storytelling and the social innovation. I like st- uh, social entrepreneurs who shift the traditional narrative. I like how uh, they they switch the the perspective about people and I think that's a very powerful thing so for example there is this um, this entrepreneur uh, who is a fellow of Ashoka who is called Arnu Raskin and is from Belgium and he went to visit some slums in the Philippines and at the beginning he sees the slum and the kids who work in the slum has a uh, poor kids that need to be helped okay. and then one of the kid proposes him to make a, a visit of the slum with him and and especially of the garbage area right and he shows him all the opportunities that are there now the fact that okay you can find some glass bottles over there or and that's what makes more money you have to be careful and come at this hour and all these resources so he comes back and he's like you know what i'm going to do something a little different These kids actually have a lot of skills, uh, skills of resilience, skills of uh, how to fight and how to survive in a very complicated environment. And these skills are necessary in the business world. So I'm going to trans instead of setting up an NGO, raising funds to give them money, he decides to tap into these kids knowledge and to um, make them be kind of trainers of business leaders. And he transforms this in in a company called Streetwise. So all the wisdom taken from the street. Mm. And with the money that he raises of all the trainings, it reinvests in mobile schools going into the slums. So I really like this this story for me. And and that's really a success story because one, it has a sustainable business model. And second, um, it's not patronizing. You know, it's not like, oh, we're going to help the poor people. It's more like, no, actually, these people have skills, they have knowledge, and we're going to first let them see themselves as people who have knowledge, Mm -hmm. and then share that knowledge with the world. So it's, it's, I I think it's a very powerful initiative. I I like that. So Uh, sustainability uh, having a business model uh, mm-hmm. that is sustainable and also uh, uh, it's not that something that as, as, as you you term it not patronizing yes. kind of a project no, yes. no, no, I, uh, I really like that tell me one thing what kind of uh, uh, characteristic would you mm-hmm. uh, sort of say this kind of characteristic or, or, or features of a personality or an entrepreneur should not get into social enterprise what would that be So, it's a little difficult. Um, I think that um, there's the, the the ego part is uh, is important. Is like, do you do it really to have an impact, or do you do it for your own ego? 
that's that's the first question that okay. I would say. Um, then I would say I don't know if there are some people who should not get into social business, but people should know how to be surrounded, right? What okay. are their skills? If, for example, your skills is not so much to manage a team, well, get somebody with you who can do that. Because a lot of social entrepreneurs are passionate people, mm -hmm. people who know a lot about their field, people who really want to make a difference, but that's not always enough. You need ma management skills, mm -hmm. uh, you need business skills, you need people skills, and one unique person doesn't have them all. Sure. So more than saying who should not go into that, it's more, okay, be sure that you don't go in that alone. Yeah, you need to have the right people and the right team to be Yes, there. because if not, I saw so many people burn themselves because that's another thing. Social entrepreneurs are so passionate about what they do yeah. because that's, they feel that's their calling that they can burn themselves into the process. And um, the, there are even retreats or, or gatherings where people can like rest for a while. So it's really important to know how to deal with your energy and to surround yourself with people who can... Like CEO, for example, I think that the CEO profile, like the number two profile. I mean, we talk, for example, in Facebook about Sheryl Sandberg, you know, okay, yeah. and every when people talk about Facebook, everybody's like, yeah, Mark Zuckerberg, Mark Zuckerberg. But OK, Mark Zuckerberg had the idea. Great. Yeah. But the person who is actually making the road, the, the, the wheel go around is Sheryl Sandberg inside Facebook. Okay. And these people are very important because perhaps they don't need the the social legitimacy so much they don't need to be out there so much but without them and without their them taking care of the team it's very hard that the social business goes along so it's more how to find this this good pair this good match within the the initiative yeah so having the right people the right team and the match is necessary for a successful venture uh, to really succeed as far as social inter yeah you know. and and after after there's also a question of values, I think that uh, um, social entrepreneurs for me have a certain set of values that um, that is in I mean impressionable. Um, if you don't have these values, it's it's very hard that because what I love about social entrepreneurs and uh, that's why I love to coach them, for example, in storytelling, that usually their personal values are aligned with their business and professional values. And that's one thing that is causing so much depression or crisis into general career people, because at one point of life, you realize that, oh, I'm not doing what I want to do. Or actually, my values are there, but at work, I do this, which is not very coherent with what I believe in. And at one point, you, you get to this tension and stress between your heart and your brain. So for me, social business is actually how you reconcile this, the heart and the brain, and how you ensure that your professional and personal values are completely aligned. Okay. Tell me one thing is about these people. Uh, some people have this notion or kind of worry, uh, which I might say that I don't, that's why I might not consider them social entrepreneurs. But anyway, they feel that Social entrepreneurism is, is social social enterprise is a very good thing. Uh, it is something that I would do something good for the society and also will bring uh, money to the business. But they might not make big money, mm -hmm. and also uh, uh, they might not be able to raise uh, funds because of the people who are normally investing in such a business. They would like to make money. Uh, they want to make a return on their invest investment. What can you say about that? Okay, um, so what I would say about that is that. Um First, um, there's a, a, a huge field that is developing, which is the social impact investment and, and what we call impact investing, which is instead of being a philanthrop and instead of giving money um, to NGO, there are a lot of uh, people who want to invest now more and more in social ventures. Okay. So this field is developing in Europe a lot, in, in the US a lot. There's the SOCAP um, event every year in September in San Francisco. So investing like with a, with a business vision in social in initiatives mm. is getting bigger and bigger. So this field exists and I would okay. recommend social businesses to go and to look into this. The second thing I would say is that it really depends how you sell what you do. That's as, as an entrepreneur, social yeah. entrepreneur. Yeah, even okay. a social entrepreneur is like, perhaps you don't have to say you're a social business. Mm. Perhaps you don't have to sell yourself 
as a social business. Mm. The important thing is that you know that you do it for the good reasons, mm -hmm. but um, social businesses can also function as a hybrid model. So, for example, a, a little like Tom's, for example, you know the shoes. I mean, what yeah, they could tell us uh, about it, please. I mean, the the, the shoes uh, of Tom's basically it's when you think about it, it's a very simple model. It's it's shoes. So these, uh, but every shoe they sell. Um, one pair goes to uh, kids who may not have shoes or may awesome. come from uh, unprivileged. Awesome. Okay. Yeah. So it's an American brand, uh, yeah. I think. Tom's shoes, huh? Yeah, Tom's. Mm -hmm. And so the hybrid model, it's a business. Mm -hmm. So I'm sure there are a lot of investors in trusting that business because they sell, because they make money. Mm -hmm. But part of what they earn is to give back. So I think that um, for people who... There is, they don't have to worry so much uh, about this insofar as if their idea is really innovative, is if their idea is selling, that's okay. At the end mm. of the day, they will manage to find investors, they will manage to find clients, and they can always um, build a hybrid model where they may generate revenue from one side and then give back I like that model, from the other the side. I like that. Uh, a number of organizations today uh, use the term CSR as in corporate social responsibility. And uh, uh, to some extent, uh, the way I see you have explained it, is that uh, that also uh, sort of relates to being a social enterprise, but using the hybrid mo model, as you said, because while they make money and they mm -hmm. make huge money, mm -hmm. but they also do activities that bring back to society. Yes. Uh, so, no, go ahead. Yeah. Uh, so, 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 so it's more or less. So any, a normal enterprise can also be a social inter or can have an activity that is. Uh, we are. We are all. We should all be social entrepreneurs. Companies, citizens, governments. I think we are all have to be social entrepreneurs. Um, there's now uh, um, an initiative called the League of Intrapreneurs for people who may not want to leave the company and start a social business because they have a family, because they, I mean, they enjoy the, the stability they have, but they actually work as entrepreneur inside the company, so intrapreneur, okay. so that the company sets up different uh, projects which have a social impact. And I think this has a lot of power because companies have huge means in marketing, for example, huge visibility. If uh, big companies like Coca-Cola or like Ikea go into uh, a, social, um, a social impact uh, project, they have a huge impact. After we can criticize why they do, etc., but I think we should also leverage that power and not go against, but go with. Mm -hmm. So that's, yeah, I definitely think that the CSR is key. But what is important um, is that the CSR should not be separated from the mainstream activities of the company. Mm -hmm. It should really be mainstream in every aspect, in okay. every project. It's not like I'm doing my business as normal and on the side, I give money to project. The ideal is that if, for example, um, I don't know, like um, including taking care of the, the climate or taking care of the environment is included in every project that the company does has their core business. And that's when the CSR is really effective, when it's really mainstream. Okay. Tell me one thing, Lily. If an organization or tell me the dangers of an organization's not doing social activity or not having the right CSR department or initiative. What are the kind of uh, uh, dangers? I think that there are different dangers. Uh, one is the reputation danger. Um, now we live in a world where we're extremely connected. We live in a world where social media is so strong that you and I, we can complain tomorrow because this company is doing this and that, and we're not happy with the, the policy they have. Um, the reputation, the social capital of brands is very valuable. Uh, they really don't want it to be harmed by any bad reputation. So I think that um, this is the danger. And the second danger is that, again, I do think we all live in this planet and we all have a res common responsibility mm -hmm. on it. And companies are social stakeholders of it. So either they give back to the society as a whole because we all have a, a certain um, yeah, responsibility to, to it. Or it's like, um, I think there's a risk of, of really being ostracized from what it is. And I think it's also a question of attracting the right people and the right talent. Mm. 
um, the, the, the best um, educated people like to work for companies which have values, who are current with their values, who try to impact their society for the better. And you like to work with a company you're proud of. Mm -hmm. So if you want to attract the right talent, it's really good for you to have strong social programs. I, I, I love that. I respect that uh, f uh, fully, Lily. We're going to take a quick break and revert back to our exciting discussion today with you. Okay. Exciting discussion today with Lily on social uh, innovation and before the music uh, break uh, we looked at uh, uh, different examples and uh, success stories uh, on social innovation and we also looked at the importance of having CSR or social activity within organization. Lily, you are a storyteller. Actually, I'm not a storyteller. Actually, I'm um, the woman who helped others tell the story i'm a story birth giver i love that i love that i love it tell us some of the activities in which you worked on helping people to become good storytellers okay so what i do is um you know first i think we are all storytellers and especially here you now in the arab world and okay. the oral culture is very strong and we all do that. I mean, to our kids, when we call friends, we're like, oh, you know what? Come on, I'm going to tell you a story. We all do that. Okay. Now, we we forgot a little in, especially in public speaking, how to um, use that skill that we have and, and to link it to the message that we want to transmit. We just, uh, yeah, we... we, 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 we we could leverage that skill much more and we don't. So what I do is basically I, I talk with people, I like to talk with people like more in one-on-one -on -one -on -one, uh, meetings and I, I let them tell their story and their life story. And through this, I try to find what is really moving them. What is the value that is at the core of their activities? What is the purpose that they're pursuing? And through different questions, and my main question is why, why, why would you do this? Get to, to the heart. And when we get to that, which is the main message that the person wants to transmit, after we see which is the story that in their life and body is uh, the best and, and is the best example, illustration of this. So for me, it's, it's a little like, um, you know, when like a gold digger mm -hmm. somehow, you mm -hmm. know, that you have the, this gold within the, the, the earth and the sand and, and you just go looking, digging and, and finding mm -hmm. what is inside the person that perhaps the person doesn't see and doesn't know that mm -hmm. much. And mm -hmm. then we're like, that's it. And after we just cook, it's a cooking exercise of putting the right ingredients so that at the end it's... Um, we have emotion, we have, uh, we have rationality as well. Mm -hmm. mm, we have one message, one story, and the audience is touched and, and remembers what, what was the message all about, yeah. Okay, is there a, a, a would, if you listen to someone say, saying or telling a story, mm -hmm. would there be a good and a bad uh, story, an example? I mean, someone said, this is a good story, now nah, this is a bad story. Or is there some kind of mechanism? That there are a lot of mechanism. Um, there are a lot of mechanism. There's the, the hero's journey. There's the idea of, okay, first stating what is the, the normal state of, of things ex um, with details about what it is, what is happening, what, what do you see, what do you smell, what do you hear? Mm -hmm. And then something happens. And then we want to know what is the struggle and the resolution that's that's the structure of a story in itself so yes okay. there there are tips there are stories that that i usually give on starting right away on being clear on your first and your last phrase on using call to action at the end so that you are really uh, conscious about what you want from the audience so yeah there are a lot of tips but for me what is what is the the, the good story is is it's very instinctive what i do is so instinctive that it's difficult to explain but um it's basically when i listen to somebody who is telling with the heart mm -hmm. the story that really matters to them okay the um the moment of grace in their life the moment the epiphany moment the moment that for them 
they understood a lot of things. The moment that changed them. Okay. These for me are the stories. Okay. So it's not so much about the skills around it because anybody can get the skills and there are so many books telling you how to tell a story. Mm. But it's about finding what is yours, what is really this moment that has shaped your life. What is unique probably about your yes. story or a project. Or yeah. Do you know most of uh, uh, successful leaders or innovative leaders uh, in this world are storytellers? Yes. Yeah. yeah. I mean, uh, I think Steve Jobs was one of good examples of someone who comes in and gives a lot of nice stories. As because well. um, in my workshop, I, I talk about, a lot about this talk about Simon Sinek, which is... Uh, the why guy. Exactly, yeah. the why guy. Yeah. So how great leaders inspire action. Mm. And um, and you can find it on, on, on TED.com. And yeah. the idea is that... Um, Apple, for example, knew how to talk from the why. Okay. And he even says in that talk that when you talk to the why, you talk to a part of the brain that actions the behavior. But when you talk about the what, okay, I'm doing classes, I'm doing jewels, I'm doing... There you talk only through the rational part of the brain. And this doesn't trigger the fact that people want to follow you. Steve yeah. Jobs and great leaders, as you say, yeah. know how to leverage stories. And, and in the stories, there's the why, the value, and people connect to that. And, and you mirror yourself in the person who is talking and you're like, oh, I like that value that they put uh, in front of me and I want and I relate to it or I aspire to it. So I want to follow you. Okay. But if you just say, okay, I'm going to do this, it's like, hmm. So yeah, I do believe that uh, storytellers and, and, and storytelling in itself is a skill that great leaders show master it's very important to to ensure that uh, their team is aligned with them and and even their clients even their suppliers so that people really know why they work with you okay now uh, I, I could be someone that I have a nice story that I need to share uh, but probably I don't uh, uh, I know you said that there are some books that is available that teach you how to, to write stories mm -hmm. and so on but probably is there some kind of like a steps that you would say yeah. uh, I would say one two three that you need to do in order to create a nice story okay so talking again about Simon Sinek what I would do is first do your golden circle first thing is okay the golden circle is is a s very simple circle with um, three lines first draw your what Mm -hmm. What are you doing? How are you doing it? And why are you doing it? That's the first thing. Second phase, I would draw your life map and go all around your life to see which is the your life event that is linked to the why that you just identified in your golden circle. When you have these two elements, which are the base of the story, then you craft it. So to craft it, basically, you need to find what is the grabber, what is the first phrase you want to use? Is it a stat? Is it mm. you want to start with the story right away? Is it a question? Then you can build into the story and explain the story you, you just chose. Then from that story, grow more general and use data mm. about uh, your business or about your project or about the people you affect to show that it's mm. not only an individual story, it's a collective one. Mm. And then your solution, call to action. Awesome. That's awesome. a simple structure. There can be very more complex structure, but, yeah, but, no, but this one a, works. No, no, this it, it works and it's, it's, it's really uh, opened uh, minds. In fact, I'm, I'm, I've learned as well. Yeah. Uh, by the way, yes. That's it. Tell us about the A factor. The A factor. The A factor is uh, is me. It's like basically uh, I, I was in a plane. Actually, I work very well in planes. Usually, okay. where, especially when they don't have Wi-Fi. <laughs> wow. Awesome. I love writing and working in planes. Or, 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 you don't sleep in airplanes? No. You do? I oh, do. I tell you, I do. Yeah, yeah. No. I, I, I tend to sleep very fast. People, some people who have got phobia, some people who, everyone got their own, um, uh, which I, I respect uh, kind of uh, fears or some of them who likes it, but some people watch movies and so I sleep. You sleep? Well, oh, I yes. write. I, I like to write. And in, that is in very place. good. Yeah. Okay. And, and I was writing about what I was doing and then I was like, so I, I'm doing this and that and actually I bring the A factor. I don't know, it just came to me. And and for me, the idea is since I'm called Aurélie and it starts with an A, yeah. the idea is oh, to Oh, I got it now. So yes. A factor because Aurélie. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I love it, that, simply. I love that. And okay. the idea is to put my personal touch in what I do. Okay. So the A factor is is bringing this personal touch to, to events. Um, so I've done a lot of events in social innovation because 
I do believe that when we look at the media, they are only drama, only negative stories, mm -hmm. only problems. Mm -hmm. So I want to, when we talk about all these social entrepreneurs, mm -hmm. I want to show them. I want to put them out there. So the events I do is to show people who may not have the chance to be in the circles we are in yeah. to know these stories and yeah. to know positive stories. So the A factor is this, is first organizing events where people feel like at home, okay. where people feel like uh, they've been taken care of. And it's not so much a question of having the best catering ever. I don't really care, to be honest. Mm. It's it's more to be um, authentic. So for example, if my topic is about women, I'll have a catering which is of uh, women who are actually developing a social business into this. So it's the coherence. Mm. And, and an event where people talk from the heart and touch the heart of the people in the audience. So for okay. me, that's that's my personal touch and the workshops that we do. So it's that's it's all the about the factor. heart at the end of the day. <laughs> no, I love that. that that's, that's that's beautiful and, 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 and really, really re respectable as well. Could you share some of the uh, topics that you have done with the A Factor? Yeah. So the the A Factor, it's um, what I did. I did different events. I, I used to work in Oxfam. And um, when I worked in NGO, I realized uh, that the world of NGOs and international development does not know the world of social business, mm -hmm. which is crazy mm -hmm. because they all try to save the world and, and improve the world. But these are two different perspectives. So I tried to bridge that gap through an event that we did in Beirut uh, called Spark Talks and um, where we, we brought different people who were innovating in humanitarian action. So they would could bring geolocalized data, they could uh, work with food, they could work with new media, social media. But the idea is to say, okay, there's a human crisis, uh, which is Syria at the moment. You can tackle it the traditional way, which is what uh, UNHCR and many NGOs are doing through shelter, through providing food, water, which is very important. But you can also think in an innovative way and, and see how you can leverage new media, um, for example, to ensure that uh, the, 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 the care and the situation is getting better. So we did this. We, did, uh, we worked in Nairobi to do a documentary on, again, social innovators, because when people in, in Europe think about Africa, they don't think about Africa as a place of innovation. They think problems, hunger, uh, conflicts, tribes, whatever. And I wanted to show a different face, again, of innovation. And for example, um, we did this documentary and then a, a, a tour showing, okay, uh, in Nairobi, you have what we call, uh, you know, no, the Silicon Savanna. Oh, and nice. You didn't know, so it's a yeah. Silicon Valley, but in, in Nairobi, Nairobi, because you have so much innovation in terms of mobile payment, in terms of um, social business, in terms of um, last mile distribution that is really bursting with a lot of entrepreneurship and people don't know about this. So, yeah. so that's what we do in the A Factor. And since I love to travel, for me, it's going to places, discovering people, and then bringing it back home and saying, look, see the reality through a different perspective. That's what I like to do. Aurélie, we're really blessed to have you in Oman. <laughs> and uh, as, 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 as Reem said, we're looking very much forward to work with you closely at Knowledge Oman to it. see how we can impact the society. I mean, uh, people like you are very few in this world, and we're so lucky to have uh, people like you and visiting us here in Oman. That's very nice. Uh, anything you wish to share before the end of our program today? Um, I, I just want to share what we, we said during the break that uh, I think um, for the just only two past days that I, I passed here through so far, I really liked the vibe here in Oman and I respect the, the spirit of peace and coexistence that you have here. And I would like it to be more vocal. Perhaps you take it for granted here in, in this country, but uh, when I'm, I was talking just before about Kenya, about uh, Lebanon, about Syria, or even in Barcelona. Okay, we love Barcelona. It's an amazing place, but there are tensions uh, between Catalonia and the rest of Spain. And I admire places where you manage to have this peaceful coexistence. So I think it would be great to push it and to push that image and to make it like you, the visit card of Oman because... 
I think it's much more than a chilled, relaxed place to go for holidays. It's a, it's a way of seeing life. It's a way of doing business. It's a way, it's a value uh, that is very powerful and that could work in, in foreign policy and diplomacy. And so I hope to contribute to that, uh, to that image. And I will, I will talk about Insh Oman back home. Inshallah, <laughs> that will happen. And I'm sure with you, along with Knowledge Oman, that will be a reality, Inshallah. Aureli, Aureli, <laughs> Lily, thank you very much for joining us today on Oman Radio FM 90.4 to share about the 10 phases of innovation. I take this opportunity to wish you and everyone the very best. Uh, and, and thank you so much for being here with us. Shukran. Ladies and gentlemen, we've come to the end of our program for today. I hope you all had an intriguing time with us. Let us catch up again next week at 5 p.m. Ma'asalama. Ma'asalama.